Hello everyone, it's Professor Fiori again. And in this video, we are going to talk about a precision op-amp clamper circuit. A clamper, as you might recall, is something that produces a DC offset that's equal to the peak value. In other words, it clamps the signal so that it's entirely positive. Conversely, you could create it so that it's entirely negative. And the important thing is, it's sensitive to the input signal. The bigger the input signal, the bigger the DC offset. Now, if you haven't seen the video that covers discrete diode clampers, discrete diode clampers, I strongly suggest that you look at that one first. Then come back to this one. The op amp version is a bit more complex, although it does solve one issue with the discrete version, and that has to do with the forward bias of the typical silicon diode. But in any case, if we had, let's say, a 10 volt peak signal, what I would like to do is add a 10 volt DC offset to it. This is the ideal clamper, all right? In other words, we do a little transient analysis over here. You can see that what we have Right. Our generator is the green signal going from uh, 0 to 10 to minus 10 and back. And the load is the maroon, which has just been shifted up by that peak value, by 10. So it's running around 10 volts, so its peak is at plus 20, and its valley, if you will, is at 0. Right? The negative peak has been translated up to 0. But the trick here is, right? it's easy enough to add a DC offset, but... The trick is, as this input changes peak value, we need this thing to change. In other words, I need this to change sort of programmatically, sensitively to the input signal. Right? That's the trick. I need something to hold this potential, to determine what that potential is, and then hold that value. So in the discrete diode clamper, we just use the capacitor in association with the diode. Here is our op-amp version of this. Here's the cap we're going to use to replace that source. And instead of just a simple diode, we have this somewhat more complicated variation with a diode and an op-amp. All right, and of course our load is sitting out here. So, first question is, if you've seen the other one, what the heck is RP for? For the most part, you can ignore RP. This is just a protection resistor so that if the capacitor were to discharge you have a discharge path when you turn this thing off. Um, this is there to just limit the current going into the op amp. All right, so it's really just a protection sort of thing. The voltage drop that's going to appear across the RP will be negligible. So you can just forget about that. Now, before we get into the analysis of this, I have to point out one thing. You know, typically, when we look at linear op amp circuits, you know, we have two rules. First is the input current is negligible. The second one is the differential voltage is zero. That's true if it's operating in linear mode. This op amp is not. It will not be operating in a normal closed loop linear fashion the vast majority of the time. Most of the time, this is actually going to be operating in an open loop situation. So the voltage between the two inputs can be huge. As a matter of fact, if you just think of RP as being a uh, you know short, inconsequential, you will notice that the load voltage is the minus input voltage. All right. Okay, so basically how does this work? First of all, consider the time constant between C and the load. I've got a 1 micro and 100K, so that's you know fairly long, right? Ks and micros will give you uh, millis, so we're looking at like you know 100 milliseconds for this, but I only have a 1 kilohertz input signal. Right, so that's a you know, one millisecond period on this thing. Half a millisecond for the first half of that sine wave. So it's pretty big. As this thing climbs up, the time constant is such that C, the voltage across C, is hardly going to change. In other words, whatever Vn is, that's what's going to appear at the load, right? at this input to the op amp. Well, what does that do? So this thing is going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's all positive. I have a positive voltage on the minus input. What does that do compared to the 
plus input, well, that's a negative voltage, so that's going to force um, the output, right? We're going to flip that positive because of the negative input over here on the op amp, and the output of the op amp is going to start going negative. As a matter of fact, it's going to dive down into negative saturation. That turns this diode off. Consequently, the load is whatever Vn was, all right? So that first half cycle, that's what we're going to see. We're going to see this 5-volt peak sort of pulse. Now, as soon as this goes negative, right, we're going to have a negative voltage on the negative terminal. That is going to force the output of the op amp to climb high, to go positive, which turns on the diode. Now, once that happens, we have some current over here to charge up C because now the uh, time constant for charging is going to be very, very small, right? The op amp can deliver a considerable amount of current, and the output impedance of this is very small, as will be the resistance of the diode. So, boom, this cap can immediately start charging, and it will basically match whatever this voltage is. So this is going negative, right? This is going to be minus up top, plus toward ground, right? So... Current's coming out of here, like this. We're going to see plus to minus across the capacitor. So this voltage is starting to climb. It basically looks like a mirror image of the source at this point. All right. Now what will happen is when once it hits that peak and the input starts to drop, this whole thing is going to flip again, turn the diode off. So this will just maintain the 20 volt or the, you know, whatever the peak voltage is, 5 volts, 10 volts. Um, it'll just maintain that, and then, of course, we have a situation like the very uh, first circuit. In other words, we have something like this. This is going to be the fixed potential that we have, right? except it's on a capacitor now. Okay, So, whatever the VIN does, that'll just be added, and we'll see that at the output. Now, every time this signal goes back down towards its minimum value, in other words, when this hits minus 5, the output's going to be sitting at about zero. And we're going to see this thing do this little toggle sort of thing I was talking about initially, where the diode turns on, boom, blasts out a little bit of current, and sort of uh, refreshes, let's say, the capacitor. Because this capacitor really is starting to droop. You know, the time constant is not infinity. It will be losing signal, but it's a very, very small amount. Um, in fact, we're going to see a little cyclic reaction here. This is easiest to see in the simulator if I add a bunch of, of items out here, all right? So what I'm doing is I'm putting a voltmeter across the cap so you can see that, and an ammeter so you can see what's happening with the diode, okay? So we're just going to do a transient analysis on this, and I'm going to go from 0 to 3 milliseconds. I want to see what the startup actually looks like, okay? Uh, not keen on these colors, so let's turn this thing. Let's turn this thing to blue. All right, that's a little happier. Now, where's our legend? Okay, so um, the input signal is this sort of dark navy, right? That's our five volt peak signal. Um, the diode current is this maroon signal, which right now is too small to see, but we'll magnify that momentarily. Um, capacitor voltage is in green, and then our load is the blue, nice bright blue. Right? Once we get past the first cycle, you can see that we have success. Right? I have this whole signal shifted up by the peak value. Right? So that's looking good, but what's happening up front here? This is, this is kind of interesting. So as I said, we would, on the first half positive cycle here, these two things, the, the um, input and the uh, output, are going to be tracking each other perfectly. All right. The, the funny thing happens when that input starts to go negative. There, we start to see the uh, diode turning on, charging up the cap. So the green, right? The green is the capacitor. You can see that thing starting to charge up. Eventually, when it gets up to uh, its maximum value, which would be the negative peak over here, right? KVL's got to work, you know, so this has got to match whatever the, 
the uh, input negative swing is. Once that happens, all right, this diode is going to be um, off, and we just treat this as a constant potential again. We just treat this in this case as a as a five volt DC potential, and we just add whatever the uh, input signal is, the sine wave generator, to that, and we just continue on like this. You can see a very slight decrease, a very slight droop in the green, right, in VC over here. And then once we get to that negative peak again, boom, there's a little tiny bump here. I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see this better. But that's sort of the refresh, this little pulse of current you get through the diode. And then it just repeats itself, right? So if you look at this very, very closely, you'll notice that there is a little bit of uh, distortion right at the negative peak. So I'm going to take a closer look at that. You can see a little bit of fuzz over here. What the heck is going on there? Before I do that, though, let's take a look at this current. All right. So I'm going to add um, a new Y axis to here so you can see it better. So our new axis right, right here is for the current. So um, you know, we're going up to a little over 100 milliamps for that, uh, that peak. All right. In fact, this op amp in, in the real world is going to saturate. We're never going to get quite that high, but that's OK. Don't worry. Uh, if we zoom in on this, you'll actually see that this is sort of a chatter. It's going up and down, 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 right? So let's get a little bit of magnification on here, and you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so here comes the signal going down, right? So this dark blue, that's the input signal. and the green is the capacitor voltage, and this maroon is the current coming out. So as I said, right, this thing turns on, we get a pulse of current, and if you look very closely in here, you can see that this is rising, the green is rising. But it then starts to droop off again, as it will, in which case it's just enough to trigger the op amp, so it fires again, and this happens a bunch of times, right? That's why this green line through here, the VC has this little stair-steppy kind of response to it. But eventually it sort of catches up, right? And we are good. This just climbs up to the peak value and, you know, everything's fine, All right? And we're there. Now you also notice there's a little peak over here that we're seeing on the current. So let's zoom in on that. Okay, so you see the current coming along. There's a little spike, all right? And this green up here is VC. If you were to track this up, there's the little boost, if you will, the little refresh on the capacitor to hold that potential. And if you look very carefully at the, uh, the blue signal, which is the load, you will see there's a little bit of a dig in there all right, there's a little bit of a as that current pulses up. So it's not perfect, but you know, look at the scale. That's 25 millivolts. So this this little imperfection is just a few millivolts. You know, for the most part, this thing is working out, you know, quite nice. Okay, we're getting this nice signal that's coming out. Um, we don't have any of those problems with the you know the 0.7 volt kind of issue that we had with the discrete version. Um, that looks pretty nice, right? The op amp output is actually swinging wildly during this, this particular case. It's actually going from saturation up. So what I'm going to do here, let me close this to clean it up a little. Um, same circuit, I've just added a little probe here at the output of the op amp, and you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so this right here is the signal of interest, all right? The maroon is the output of the op amp. So you look back here, yeah, we're going all the way down to saturation. This is a 15 volt power supply. So we're getting about a 13 volt saturation. So it's sitting in saturation a lot. Then it comes up, you get this chatter, which we saw from the current. And this is largely dictated by the speed of the op amp, the slew rate. If we were to uh, zoom in on this, which I will in a sec, you know, you'll see what I'm talking about. But anyway, this sits up here, you know, right around a, a diode drop off of uh, uh, off of zero, right? Because of 
D over here, right? Here's one volt, so you can see what the relative level is. And then, boom, it goes right back down, right? So it's just, every now and then you get this little pulse. So it's just uh, largely sitting at negative saturation, then you get this little pulse. All right, so let's zoom in on that, and you can see what I was referring to. All right, so you see these little bang, 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 and every, on, every single one, you see that little stepping on the capacitor voltage, right? So this is, like I said, limited by the speed of the op amp. The 318 is a pretty fast op amp. You know, you're looking at 50, 60, 70 volts per microsecond. So I chose this specifically so that you could see this effect. If you threw a slower op amp in here, you might just get kind of like a lumpy looking thing, maybe a couple of oscillations. You know, it's not going to look quite like this all right but there you have it okay so what's next on the hit parade well how about clamping with an offset here you go all we have to do is change what the reference is instead of having the plus input go to ground just throw a, a dc value in here all right so you'll see what i'm talking about this is a two volt offset that i've thrown in and you can see our signals. All right, so once again, there's the load. There's the little, you know, the first cycle is a little funky, but after that, it comes out pretty nice. All right, let's grab a uh, probe here, and you can see what's going on. All right, so that, that input signal, 5 volts. So that's 10 volts peak to peak, right? So ordinarily, it would be going from 0 to 10, but I've added a two volt offset, so that thing should be peaking out at 12. And where are we? We're at 11.9 and change, right? 11.96, six something. You know, we're virtually there. And then if we come down over here, you know, we're gonna be at the two volts, right? So you're off by a couple of millivolts. Eh, what are you gonna do? Okay, nothing is perfect. Perfection is that which cannot be attained. There you go. Uh, you can also, finally, right, flip the diode around and get it to clamp in the other direction so that you get a, a negative clamp instead of a positive clamp. And, you, of course, you could also use an offset on that as well. All right, positive or negative offset. You can shift this either way. So this is a very uh, versatile circuit in that regard. Um, it does have a limitation in terms of speed because of the op amp, right? You know, an individual op amp is not going to be as fast as a, a simple diode, but, you know, you do need positive and negative power supplies too. It's not, again, it's not perfect, but it does solve some problems for us. Um, versatile, accurate, hence the term precision. There you go. Questions? Put them in the comments. See you next time.